At last, we reached the front of the queue for the boats. I couldn't help smiling. The sky was bright blue and tiny clouds looked like smudged fingerprints. A gull dipped down into the water and flapped away with a fish in its beak. I held Mama's hand tighter and she smiled down at me. Even the wary men were smiling. Of course, fair days were their favourite. They would have a heavy purse of money by the end. We found ourselves sharing a boat with a farmer and a live goose. The goose was in a basket, but was far from happy about it, and it showed its displeasure by trying to peck the farmer through the reeds. I could feel the river's strength beneath our little boat as the wherrymen weaved between the other vessels. I counted eight more wherries heading back to Southwark. Through the bridge's arches, I glimpsed the galleon, a huge sailing ship anchored at the wharf on the other side of the river. I asked Mama where she thought it had come from, but she didn't reply. As we came close to shore, a barge cut across us, gliding towards Westminster. The goose flapped around and the boat rocked harder, making the wherryman swear. Mama cuddled me into her and didn't let go until we safely reached the other side. We scrambled out onto the puddle dock and for a little while afterwards, I was still swaying, though I could have just been dizzy with excitement. We joined the noisy crowds, heading up the narrow streets towards the fair. We heard it before we saw it. A trumpet. Street criers and the shouts of laughter became louder as we drew nearer. Soon, I could smell the fair too. Wafts of roasting meat curling their way over us. I imagined whole pigs and lambs turning on spits, sausages and hams, and all the fruit that Mama had told me about. Apricots and oranges. Fruit I'd never even dreamed I could taste. Boom, boom, boom. As we came onto Smithfield, a girl marched towards us banging a drum. She was about the same age as me, a little taller with a cloud of light brown hair that her bonnet couldn't hold in. She was wearing a white gown with blue stars sewn onto the skirt and every time the drumstick thumped down, her bonnet gave a little shake, threatening to fly free. She stopped in front of us, drumstick in the air and gave Mama a little bow. Good mistress, said the girl. Do you care to know the secret to your fortune? Do you wish to know how the stars fall for you and your daughter? Do your humours feel out of balance on this fine, beautiful day? Before Mama could reply, the girl leaned towards us like she was telling us a secret. My brother Griffin is the best soothsayer in the whole fair. He learned from the Queen's own favourite, the great John Dee himself. You'll find us next to the fire eater. I tugged Mama's hand. Can we have our stars read? Mama smiled. Be patient, Eve. There are so many things to see. She was right. Over in one corner, the Sharps had set up tables for games of shove her penny and dice, offering a heavy purse to anyone who could beat them. I laughed. I recognised two of the rogues from the ale houses in Southwark. The gamblers who didn't lose their money at the tables would lose it at the pickpockets watching carefully nearby. An acrobat had slung a rope between two poles higher than our heads. He stood on it, one foot stretched out, carefully finding its place before the other foot lifted, all while carrying a shrieking woman on his back. We wriggled our way through the shouting crowd. In a clearing, two men were dodging and smashing sticks together, their faces shining with sweat. One had a bleeding cut above his eyebrow, I wanted to stay and watch, but Mama pulled me away. Are you hungry? She asked me. I was always hungry. She knew that. She showed me a handful of coins. I've been saving these for this very day. We were richer than I expected. I wondered if Mama had carefully put aside a little money and all the years that it had been raining too hard for us to come. We walked past trays of fat, dark pigs and pale green plums, cauldrons of pottage and tables groaning with cheeses tubs of pickled herrings and pies, but I knew what I wanted. And I led Mama to the hog roast, watching carefully as the storeholder carved the slices for us. We found a patch of grass and settled down to enjoy our food. As I sunk my teeth into the soft, smoky meat, I wondered what it would be like to eat like this every day. It wouldn't have to be pork. Mutton would do, or capons roasted with herbs, or... <sighs> Aside, it would never happen. Maybe that was a good thing, because if it did, I wouldn't appreciate it as much as I was enjoying this now. Afterwards, we walked around again. I saw the drummer girl. She raised her eyebrows at us, but Mama shook her head. She decided it was time to go. The sky to the east was starting to darken, and Mistress Horstead would be expecting us. There was also too much ale being swilled, and that always leads to fights. We wanted to be out of the way before the brawling started. We wormed our way through the crowds, 
back towards the edges of the fair, and then a stall caught my eye. The woman behind it had a pale, lined face and a wide, friendly smile that made her eyes crinkle up. On the table in front of her were row after row of poppets. Some looked floppy, made from rags and wool with faces stitched from dark thread. Mama had made me one like that when I was little, but I had lost it in our travels. Others were wooden with carved faces and gowns made from rich fabrics. The woman held up one of the smaller poppets and beckoned me. Before Mama could grab me, I ran towards it. Do you like it? The woman asked. I reached out to touch it, but she shook her head. It was a wooden head, the colour of my skin. Its body was softer, made from fabric, dressed in a blue gown topped with crisp white apron. Dark hair poked out from beneath its bonnet. It will bring you luck, the woman said. We need luck, don't we, Mama? I said. Yes. Mama laughed quietly. We do, but I'm not sure a puppet is the way to find it. You are far too old for toys, Eve. The lady nodded like she understood. It's not just a puppet. It's a lucky puppet. So lucky I can sell it cheap. Just three half pence. That's all it costs to buy you luck. Mama shook her head. I could buy a whole chicken for that. The woman frowned, then sighed. A scrawny chicken will give you a couple of mouthfuls of chewy meat. This poppet will bring you and your daughter good luck for the rest of your long lives. I will take one penny for it, even though that will break me. She gave a sad smile. I want you to have all the luck, young sweetheart. I stayed quiet. I was from Southwark. I knew all the tricks. Mama handed over a penny and the woman passed me the doll. I smiled at her, but she was already hailing new customers. I clutched the puppet to me as we trotted back down towards the river. A wind had struck up and it felt like it would bring rain with it. We'll take the bridge, Mama said. Mama looked up at the darkening sky, then down at the water churning through the piers under the bridge. Downstream, even the cargo boots seemed to be trying to shake free from their moorings. The bridge, though, was truly blocked. A horse had collapsed, tipping over its cart full of barrels. Black tar-like pitch spilled across the cobbles. Crowds were shouting and trying to push past without walking in the sticky mess. We tried to find a gap to pass through, but it was impossible. The people heading to London wanted to reach it before the city gates were locked for the night, while those leaving were intent on arriving safely in Southwark while there was light. There are many desperate rogues on our side of the river, and few watchmen to stop them. As well as people like us returning home, young men and women were looking to enjoy the theatres and feast baiting on Bankside. Many of them looked like they'd already been enjoying the alehouses around the fair. Mama used her shoulder to get us to the front but refused to take the first boat. She said the worry men looked drunk. The tide was at its highest. We needed steady hands. A man shoved Mama aside. Move if you're not travelling. He was tall, and I could smell the beer on his breath. It was hard to see his face properly in the twilight. Judging by his clothes, he was far away from being a gentleman. Mama drew herself up. I can assure you, sir, we are travelling. The man looked Mama up and down. She stared back. The man nodded. Please accept my apologies. He took his purse from his pocket and drew out a handful of coins. Allow me to pay for your passage. He stepped into the wobbling boat and passed the money to the wary man. The wary man studied the coins. Where to? Mama looked from the man to the coins. Was she going to refuse? Mama was always suspicious of strangers. Tell him where you want to go, the man instructed. The fare is paid. To the church stairs, please, Mama said. Mama stepped into the boat and held out her hand to help me in. The boat only had two seats, so I settled myself on Mama's lap. The man who had paid our fare took the other seat. Mama gripped me harder as water splashed over us. The other passenger had his eyes closed and was moving his mouth like he was praying. I held my puppet close to my chest. If you really are lucky, now is the time to show it. The wary man laughed. A shout came from beside me. We were in the middle of the river now. The rain a slow, steady drizzle that soaked my clothes. The man was struggling to his feet. Please, Mama said. Stay seated. Her voice was whipped away by the wind. The wary man shouted something cruder, but the man ignored him. Turn back, the man shouted, before you kill us all. The boat twisted towards the bridge. Suddenly, I saw not only the arches, but every brick and every crack between every brick. I heard the splash and howl of the water as it shot between the pillars. Then the boat pitched and I hit the water. No, it hit me. And that is the end of story time. Thank you so much for joining me. 
My name is Charity Morone and I've been reading chapter one and two from Patrice Lawrence's Diver's Daughter, A Tudor Story. I highly, highly recommend you getting this book if you're interested in finding out what happens to Eve and her mother and the rest of this wild and amazing journey. If you enjoyed this video and would like to hear more stories from Untold Voices, please make sure you subscribe to this channel, Stories That Have Wings, and stay tuned for all the amazing stories that are going to come. Thank you so much for listening. Take care.